Good morning. Welcome to the second session of Save the Rivers 33rd Annual Winter Environmental Conference. I would like to again thank this year's sponsors for making Winter Environmental Conference possible. Save the River is a membership-based organization. We want to thank those of you who are members and encourage everyone else to become a member by going to our website and join Save the River. Before introducing today's presenters, Lindsay Levy and I want to give you an update on Trash Free River. Save the River's Trash Free River program has been up and running for about a year and a half. And Save the River has been cleaning up shoreline and boat slips for several years on both sides of the upper St. Lawrence River in an effort to make the St. Lawrence River swimmable, fishable, and drinkable now and for generations to come. In this first photograph, you can see volunteers from the Ciro Agency participating in our first cleanup. The problems of trash in the water of the St. Lawrence River have been well documented and can be observed on a daily basis by islanders and boaters. Removing plastics and other man-made debris from the St. Lawrence River is a pressing concern with our trash-free river cleanups. And we plan to start an annual tradition of shoreline and river bottom cleanups, removing a major source of pollution from the river. Our 2021 shoreline cleanups. This is a list and we'll be going over these individually, but you can see the scope of the cleanups that we will took on in 2021 and also some familiar faces there. In 2022, April 23rd on Fisher's Landing of Earth Day, <coughs> we, excuse me, we are joined by Jefferson County Commissioner Phil Reed. We had eight volunteers and four staff. It was the coldest cleanup we did that year. You can see uh, just by the way the people are dressed how cold it was. Uh, we learned a, a lesson that day. There are a lot of tires in the river that we had to deal with. Our next cleanup, May 15th in Cape Benson, we had 40 volunteers and four staff. We worked nine locations that day. Uh, we were joined by Jefferson County Commissioner Bob Cantwell. And afterwards, a group from Cape Benson went back and did a major cleanup in Wilson's Bay. The uh, gentleman waiting in the water there is Ron Seeley, who's been very active in our Trash Free River cleanups. He was right out in the mud and in the water. Our next big event was June 11th through the 12th in Wellesley Island. It was our biggest cleanup of the year. We had 115 volunteers and six staff on 12 sites. We pulled out 12 contractor bags of garbage, various metal scraps, uh, we had our largest corporate team from ABC 50 that was led by Izzy Kalolo. And we had dump trucks from two townships. We've had amazing participation from the town supervisors, the mayors, uh, everybody is pitched in with equipment and manpower to make this project a success. On August 12th, we went down to Chippewa Bay. We had 40 volunteers and five staff. Uh, we had a total of 10 contractor bags, but we also had a large front end loader and dump truck that we loaded up with heavier gear. Interestingly enough, we found polystyrene 100 feet up from the shoreline. Some of that may have been pushed up by the flooding, but it is getting pushed further up into the grasslands and the meadows by the, the wind. Uh, so it's not just the, the river animals and birds, but it's other birds and animals that are being affected by this. Our next cleanup, August 25th in Eel Bay in Grindstone Island. Uh, we were joined by our corporate sponsor, Labatz. Labatz has been a sponsor of Trash Free River cleanups for four or five years now. Uh, you can see these pictures in the center. It is not just the men on this team. They all like to pick up huge things and bring a lot of trash out of the river. So we welcome them. September 25th, a group from the Cape Vincent Improvement League went back to Wilson's Bay in Cape Vincent with 29 volunteers and took out four huge contractor bags of garbage, three tires, an old rug, and large debris. Uh, so we welcome working with these community groups. This next picture is just an overall 
photograph that shows a lot of the heavy equipment that we use on these cleanups. And again, we, a lot of thanks to the town supervisors and mayors and crews. These people came out on the weekends. They were very helpful moving the equipment around. Uh, you couldn't do a program of this magnitude without their help. The following photograph is, uh, is interesting. If we can just slow down here for a minute because most people that go out for these cleanups want to get what we call the trophy pieces of trash, the big blue barrels, uh, the big sheets of plastic. And we found lots of those. But I counsel people, our volunteers that are out there working to also take time to stop, look down at their feet and look at the shoreline. And you can see this one photograph where one of our volunteers spent a lot of time and just picked up small particles of polystyrene and other plastics that are quickly on their way to becoming microplastics. So these little particles are just as important as the big particles because they're on the way to getting in the gullets of the fish, into the birds, and eventually into humans. And you can see this one horrific picture down there at the right of a fish that died from ingesting these pellets. You can see the pellets are oozing out of their gills. The, uh, the larger picture up on the right shows the blue polystyrene that's coming out of all the floating docks along the river. That's a program that we're undertaking now to try to ban the use of those polystyrene blocks that are not encapsulated in future construction and renovation. So just in a summary, we had 143 volunteers in 2021. 31 volunteers uh, attended more than one cleanup, two or more. We had great participation from our board members and trustees. They brought their families, they brought their spouses, they brought their children, they brought their grandchildren. And we've had over 250 people participate since we've really cranked this program up about a year and a half ago. How we do this, uh, Lindsay Lev and staff are the ones that run this. Lindsay's a great organizer. We identify shoreline areas that need cleanup. We then go in and provide Google Maps of the areas, the volunteers. We run it through team captains. We train the captains. Many of these captains have worked with us on several cleanups now. We coordinate with local municipalities on the removal of the waste. We supervise a team of volunteers and we include these teams to be family or corporate teams. And we ensure that the cleanup events are run adhering to local and national COVID guidelines appropriate at the time of each cleanup to ensure each participant's safety. An example, the budget breakdown, we use outreach consultants, printed media and local newspapers, boat fuel for volunteers, t-shirts. T-shirts have become very expensive, but they're very popular. Cleanup supplies, we're now encouraging volunteers to bring their own five gallon buckets so that we don't have to use plastic bags to pick up plastic. And of course, staff wages uh, for oversight and direct participation. And how it works in participants, we have teams that register in advance. Uh, we use captains, the captains have been very helpful. Uh, we try to do this with minimal contact or no contact solution at Save the Rivers office because of COVID. Uh, each day, the cleanup areas will be split into designated locations and zones. We encourage people to bring their kayaks. This is a wonderful project for using kayaks. And there's always a designated area for the teams to dispose of their collected trash. Who can participate? We encourage local businesses, as I said earlier, families. Uh, you need to be accompanied by an adult if you're under 18. Individuals are also encouraged to register and will be assigned to a team in a specific zone. And again, this is a kayak friendly project. So we encourage kayakers to come and be part of it. Expansion of Save the Rivers Trash Free River Program. We are now working with Dank, the Development Authority of the North Country, on their Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day program, which has been in existence for many years. Uh, we started coordinating the island and shoreline part of the program in the fall in 2021. We had 13 families 
get involved in this very meaningful program on the first day, uh, which we think was wonderful. Uh, this, it's an important issue to get these legacy chemicals off the islands, out of the boathouses, out of the sheds. Many of these chemicals have been touched by humidity or high water and they're in cans that are rusting and rotting. Uh, it's an easy process. You bring them out to an approved waste site just the side of Watertown. You can see I've got a load of them in the back of my car there. You can see what these chemicals look like. The 2022 collection dates, the dates haven't been determined yet, but it'll probably be in May 2022 and fall 2022. And we will let you know. So, you know, in ending, um, we want to thank the Leonard C. and Mildred F. Ferguson Foundation and Northern New York Community Foundation for their financial support uh, and also pushing us and helping us make this program a success. Again, all the volunteers that are involved, the board members, staff, uh, we encourage everybody to get involved. Look, look for an opportunity to get out there. People are enjoying this. It's a chance to get their feet muddy, their hands dirty and do something good for the river. In closing our 2022 dates right now, April 22nd on Earth Day, we'll be doing a cleanup at Fisher's Landing. That's always a cold water and cold weather event. July 29th and 30th, River Days, we plan to have multiple locations from Cape Vincent to Waddington. And we'll also be working with the Thousand Islands Association who have embraced trash-free trash river. And they're starting a very active program on the Canadian side of the river. And following July 30th, we're going to have a volunteer appreciation event at Northern Flow Vine Vineyards with Duluth's Garden Center. So we'll look forward to seeing many of you there. Thank you.